The great valley of central California lies almost in the center of the state. It is more than 400 miles long and 60 miles wide, a valley filled with deep, fertile soils and drained by two river systems. The wealth of this northern section of the great valley was water flowing from the nearby mountains and compare it with this in the southern San Joaquin. This soil is rich. Given enough water, it could produce bountiful harvests. In 1960, Congress passed the San Luis Act to create the San Luis Reservoir, which would distribute water to the farming communities in the lower San Joaquin Valley. In August of 1962, President Kennedy came to inaugurate the San Luis Reservoir. Thousands of farming residents came to see him speak. This is a fast trip, but if uh, it had no other benefit than to permit us to look at this valley and others like it across the country, where we can see the greenest and most richest earth producing the greatest and richest crops in the country. And then a mile away, see the same earth and see it brown and dusty and useless, and all because there's water in one place and there isn't in another. I know of no better trip for any president or any member of the House or Senate or indeed any citizen. This project represented 10, 20, and 30 years effort of devoted citizens and this project is the result and our action today of 30 years of men, some of whom have now died, who thought that this dam would help this valley. We always have some different ideas of how that course of action can be made more perfect. And yet in this case, one part of your state has been willing to help another part because they realize that as this state does well, so does the United States. Nothing could be more disastrous for this country and for the citizens of one part of the state to feel that everything that they have is there and it should not be shared with other citizens of this state. ¿Aplicará para estampillas durante los últimos 30 días? Okay. 
que uh, ¿Cómo compró su comida el resto del, del mes? ¿Trabajo, desempleo? Trabajo, trabajo. ¿Trabajo? ¿Está ahorita sin trabajo? Sí. ¿Le afectó a su trabajo la falta de agua? Uh, ¿Aplicaría para estampillas en el siguiente mes? No, veo un poco trabajo para los que Ok. Bueno, estamos, como you know, as you know, our people around here is really needy, so we're out there raising money to do food drives at least once a month. And today we have we're giving away about 1,500 boxes of food, and we've had we've had a lot of corporate donors also, and farmers donating money, and other corporate citizens donating money, city donating money. We've been do, we've been in the, the business now of helping people okay. for uh, since 1965. Uh, we're, we're part of the uh, Economic Opportunities Act that was signed in 1964, part of President Johnson's War on Poverty. And so we put together some nice boxes of food, as you can tell, uh, and some vegetables and things, so that uh, you know the people can take a nice meal home. The town of Fireball, Mendota, have about 40% unemployment. When I was teaching here before the water crisis, I had students. Most of my students, I'd say 88% of my students, didn't have money for breakfast or lunch. Okay, I can't imagine what they don't have now. So that's basically what we're doing. Uh, there's a lot of need out here, so we're doing our part to help the community uh, make it through these really tough months and hopefully something better comes down the road. Vamos a tener un difícil porque no tenemos trabajo. ¿No tienen trabajo? Sí. Ah, ok. Eh, pues, le ha afectado muchísimo el concurso. Por ejemplo, siempre tenemos melón, tomate. Este, ahora no, nada de eso. ¿no? Con la falta de agua. Con la falta de agua. Afecta a nuestra familia y a Pues que estamos sin, sin, estamos sin trabajo porque no nos dieron agua. Aquí para el, ahorita está muy, muy, no hay, muy seco, no hay nada de agua. Otros años está uno trabajando para ese tiempo y ahorita nada, que ha trabajado uno porque no hay agua, no hay, no hay trabajo. trabajo. Los maridos trabajan a veces la mitad de tiempo por lo mismo que no, no nos dieron agua. Uh -huh. Difícil. ¿Y ustedes son de aquí de Fargo? Sí. Oh, okay. Porque yo sé que Mendota también nace, ¿verdad? Sí. Hacen también, en Mendota. También todo. en Mendota y en San Joaquín también. ¿En ah, San Juan? Sí. Okay. Okay. También, todo aquí alrededor no hay sí. nada de trabajo. you came out to the west side we had crops going on like uh, broccoli, garbanzo beans, spinach, grain, a lot of grain and then we either go into cotton, tomatoes, or cantaloupes. The asparagus down there and uh, this this is uh, being set up for major cantaloupes next year if we have the water. Hey, this field's been idle for two years now because of the water. Same thing? Yeah. Yeah, they, they still went ahead and worked it up like if they're gonna have water. Nothing was planned here, and I don't know what they're doing here now. They're planting grain or something, but this land was left idle all this year. Yeah, this is land has been left idle all year. This is land has been left idle two years or like here they, they prepared like they're gonna grow cotton. Mm -hmm. And and they uh, they got it ready, they they worked the land, they had maybe a hundred hundred and fifty dollar an acre investment mm -hmm. and, and in the hope that they get the water. They're gambling. They're gambling. Uh, when I was a kid, when I was starting farming, it was wall to wall cotton. Every acre was either cotton or tomatoes or cantaloupes. So it, now, as you as you hit the west side, there, there's, uh, there's hardly any cotton out here. I mean, you see an occasional field cotton, but that guy would most of us figure out in economic use, it's not worth it for us to grow cotton. We've taken that gamble before too, and we've, we've 
it hurt us financially. But that's that's where a lot of us now are. You don't want to do anything. You, just, you, you know, this right here is drip, so we just worked up the beds. See how see how drip, see how see how we're irrigating our, our, our trees. This this is precise. This is uniformity. We have we have six six of these emitters per tree, mm -hmm. and you can see it's real slow and it's close straight into the ground. Farm advisors have kind of told us that you know you might be able to keep the tree alive with half the amount of water of its of, of whatever the, the tree usage for for a year. That could be the goal of next year, of trying to keep the tree alive. The problem with that is we don't know the uncertainty of production of two years or three years from now. There are friends of ours who have not kept their trees alive. Like this guy here, I didn't even see this. Joe told me that he gave up on his trees already. Trying to purchase it, but they have to pay a very expensive, high rate. You know, I think that our water supply is right now three times more than normal. You know? But our districts have done a pretty good job of trying to purchase water from from from, uh, from neighboring water districts. Guys that have, you know, guys. That Last year, uh, there was a biological opinion that came uh, uh, was produced by the um, Department of Fish and Wildlife, which is a, a federal agency. Um, there, they were sued uh, by environmental groups to protect the Delta smelt. Well, what that did effectively was that cut back water that would would have been delivered to us, um, and that water basically flowed out to the ocean. So that, that biological opinion took away more than what just the drought took away. We only got 10%. 10% uh, allocation is nothing. Now we're dependent on basically uh, developed water, water that comes from Northern California into the valley. There's a sort of a hierarchy of water rights in this, in this valley. Basically what, what that means is that... Um, the irrigation districts immediately north of the Westlands are going to get most of their water. The very first people to get water are the people who have historical water rights or riparian rights. We're around Farba, the city of Farba, those are what Joe was talking about. Those are the historical water rights. They get their water first. These are people that settled on the rivers, along the rivers, <clears throat> and they had old riparian rights. And they get the first water and they get all their water before the next group gets any, and the next group after that is actually the refuges. Then after that come the municipal and, and industrial cities, uh, places like Santa Clara Water District, um, Metropolitan Water District, and so forth. And then we're the last guys. So first, the you know these others have to be fulfilled before they get to us. It's a bucket line. The last people in line may not get any water. The Westlands knew that. We're the last guys on the totem pole. We're the guys at the end of the pipeline, you know, who get the last water, if there's any water. So we're the first ones to take the hit. We're the first ones to be cut back. And we're the ones who are cut back the most severe. regulations 
that take away your rights to have water that put fish above you. Is that acceptable? No! I spent six years in Sacramento on the Water Committee, and what do we have? Nothing. Let's hear a great big boo for Sacramento's Water Committee. Folks, the current chairman, the current chairman was one of the attorneys that was involved in the San Joaquin River decision. All this litigation, 18 to 20 years, he is now the chair of the committee. That should outrage everyone in this valley. Where is Dean Flores? Where is the other legislators that are elected from this valley that ought to be here today to support this rally? Amigos tanto que trabajan, los señores rancheros también tanto que se tienen que levantar tempranito para proveer los alimentos y los cultivos. ¿Y ustedes cómo trabajan? ¡No es justo, caray! You know, for those of you that are lucky enough to have taping equipment, I saw a sign on the way over here that really says it all. Fish don't vote. <laughs> Day five. Come on, listos. Are we ready? Yeah. Here we are. Put on my hat. We're gonna start marching. Okay, we need to do that. We're going to San Luis, and we won't be turned around. Así que felicidades a todos y un aplauso bien fuerte para ustedes. Mr. Congressman, I want you to know today how proud I am of each and every one of you, of farmers, farm workers, school teachers, husbands, wives, children, together. You are putting a face of the San Joaquin Valley on the map of California and on the map of the United States. You are the hope of this valley. Marching for a lot of people who worked and labored to put food on America's table that will never be honored. They'll never be recognized. People like my daddy, who labored in these fields for 40 years and died over at Community Hospital in Fresno. He had emphysema from his breathing that dust for 40 years, but he never complained. You marched for him today. You marched for everyone who labored in those fields. You're marching for everyone who worked those cotton fields. I lived in Mendota. I love Mendota, and I can say that because I lived in Mendota for two years. We are, right now, fighting for our survival. Because if we don't get water next year, it, it's, you know, our future is dried up. We're gone. I've been farming out here since 1985. Uh, I grew up out here in the area of Fireball, California. Uh, but I guess I have to say that I grew up on a farm, so I worked in farm work since I was a child, literally, since I was nine years old. My, far, my father worked on a farm. Um, he, uh, he worked himself up to become a manager of a farm, but nevertheless, uh, we've been among farm workers all our lives. We both grew up on the farms. His father was a ranch manager, and my father was a ranch manager. We were like, well, 15 miles away. We were young guys. We grew up in the fields, working on the fields, and, and uh, we went to school here, local schools here. Here, here, when I was 16 years old, I used to pick lettuce right here. 
and I'm and I'll never forget having to come here and work here wintertime. But it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. You know, it taught me the hard work and appreciation for anyone who does the field work. My father always told me that. You know, nothing, there's nothing to be ashamed of being a farm worker. We all at one time were migrant farm workers. My, my family yeah. were migrant farm workers that came from Imperial Valley to follow the crops. And uh, uh, my, grand, my grandfathers uh, was, were, were migrant farm workers uh, here in the valley, and they used to go from Los Angeles to Porterville to Fireball, all the way to San Jose. And, uh, and then they finally, in the 1940s, they settled here in Fireball, where my father uh, uh, worked on a large uh, farming. Uh, can be can be no worse than Mexico, but there's no work. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least here in the United States, there's work. What's 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 so bad about having to work in the fields and sweat a little bit? Tell me. <laughs> so I started realizing, wait a minute, why can't we go to college and, 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 and study ag and come out here and work on the farms? You know, be a farm manager or a ranch manager. Mm-hmm. I started. My first farming adventure when I was 21 years old, I took on 10 acres of, of ground that I planted cotton. I liked the experience. Uh, I didn't make a lot of money at it, but I liked the experience. And then I finally had an opportunity to farm in 1986. I was able to lease some land here where I'm located now. This ranch here, for, for all the right reasons, uh, gave, gave us an opportunity to, to, to start farming here. Gilbert's father worked for Sam Hamburg. Gilbert was one of the guys that helped me get into here because he knew the, the owners mm-hmm. and he's the one that told them, give this guy a break here. Well, the guy that gave a break was me because Gilbert was my friend. Mm-hmm. So he, he had a chance to farm some acres, but he, he was retired already. But he gave, Gilbert's the one that put in a good word for all of us, like uh, Joel and myself and there's about two other Hispanic guys that started farming here. So we were all, we were, him and I we used to kind of, all of us used to work together to lend us equipment or, you know, help each other if we could, you know. I was in El Salvador. Joel was done. I was oh, down in El Salvador in the winter of yeah. 1984 mm-hmm. yeah. when the manager of the farm here, you know, who worked for this guy, yeah, Dave Dermer, yeah. called me and he says, we have an opportunity to rent some land out here. Would you like that? Would you like to rent it? Yeah. And I said, wow, I'd love to, but, um, you know, I'm down here. I, you know, I'll, I'll need to see what I can do when I get back. And uh, he says, "Don't worry." He says, "I, I talked to this cotton ginning company, and and they said that you come back, you talk to them, they'll probably finance you." And so he, uh, he, he's offering to rent me land. You know, and mm-hmm. even though he knows I, I don't have anything. We have nothing else, man. and thank God that there was a lot of friends, farmers that were established farmers who helped us out. The farmer that was here uh, was Sam Hamburg. He, uh, he passed away and, and, and uh, his estate gave some of us guys, Hispanic farmers, a chance to lease land and farm here. They gave us an opportunity. Uh, we took advantage of it and uh, eventually they sold the land to us and we, we became uh, landowners. I had just a few thousand dollars in the bank and uh, I just bought a a pickup with that, and that was my start. <laughs> uh, started. And we we're lucky that that people would, you know, lend us money and finance us. We we're we had people who lent us their equipment, farmers of friends, lent us equipment, farmer friends. Um, you know, the people who sold fertilizer said, "We'll we'll sell you fertilizer. You know, don't worry about it. You can pay us when you get when you get money for mm-hmm. it." What Joe is trying to say is that when we started, it was nothing was easy. It was a struggle. There was times and night times when we stay up trying to figure out how we're going to pay this guy that we owe money. How are we going to make our payments? And then on top of that, we had the pressure of having to produce. So we had to work day and night if we had to. We had to survive. In fact, Dave Dermer, the the, the, the gentleman that, that was running this ranch for the Hamburg Ranch, uh, he discouraged me. He didn't want me to get into farming. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. He said, oh, Dave, I, we've, we've got to do it. You know, I've, I've got to try it. I don't have nothing anyway. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> he told me. He told me. I kind of had a little bit of the same yeah, thing. And, um, um, I got started in 1985, yeah. mm-hmm. and that year, I saw a lot of farmers going broke. Yeah. 80s, every, 30s. like every week, there were auctions at different farms. Farmers going broke, going out of business. They were selling their farm equipment. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, the auctions um, up there. And I, and and uh, I had a friend whom 
I actually deal with his son now who, who holds our almonds and I ran into him in town and he says, why in the world would you get into farming? I mean, this is, this is the darkest hour for farming. And I said, well, I said, you know what? First of all, I got a great opportunity and second of all, the only way to go is up. Our districts here are all federal water users. All, all of us have been affected by the CVPI. The CVPI reform, that was in 1992, that uh -huh. took away 50% of our water. Uh -huh. uh, it was diverted legally to, to uh, wildlife. Uh, after that, we, we had to adjust to live with 50% water of our allocation. We did it successfully. And then, uh, and then now here comes another 40% that got taken away. This? this is all land that I that I, I used to farm. I farmed this land for 25 years, mm -hmm. and uh, this is land that I'm not farming with anymore. That act there is what changed our farming. Life. All this land now is basically it was left idle all this year. Uh, 850 acres. We only we only farm 100 acres. So we've had a lot of a lot of land sitting idle. And yet, on those 850 acres, we have to pay either land payments or rent. Uh, we have to pay taxes and assessments on that land. It's, it's been a, a terrible burden. All this land was left idle all this year. I, I, I remember when they, were, when they were building this aqueduct, I was 10 years old, and that was 8 years old, because that was 1958, and uh, I was 6, 7, 8 years old. My father brought, brought us to go to bring us to the mountains over here, but I remember when the, when the machine was coming, making the canal, and uh, that was a memory i never forget. I still remember when President Kennedy came down to, to the dam, because at that time, uh, that was, the water was the supposed to be the stimulus of the uh, of, uh, state of California. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to create jobs, it was supposed to write food, and, they said, and, and send water to Los Angeles and to, to San Diego. So there was, there was all the people, all the legislators, everybody was up at, up at the dam, at the, at the San Luis Reservoir. So we were, we went, my father took us, we went. It was a good experience for us. Where it was a great example of the federal government uh, developing water for 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 the for the country really. They use they use California as an example here. And then they they made the California aqueduct. And uh, well here we are now this it, here we are at, uh, twenty years later, twenty five years later. Well we've survived everything that was thrown to us except the only thing we, we might not survive is this water issue here. This is the only thing we might not survive. We are going to rise and we're going to be fair and we're going to succeed. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. This is with respect to the UFW, that if their true intention is to help the farm worker, I mean, why didn't they participate and help uh, help the, the farm worker and the farmer uh, help us with their support in this water issue? The UFW issued this written statement. They said, quote, 
We don't oppose farmers getting access to more water, but that access should be tied to farm workers' access to clean drinking water in the field. They say that this area, the west side, is naturally a desert, and they say that this march for water will not change that. Now, how does that benefit everybody here? It does. How does a farm worker exist without a farmer? A farmer cannot farm without water. As, as, a, as a business person, as a, as a farmer, as a farm worker, uh, grandsons of migrant farm workers. It kind of disappointed me very much. They were associated with Lloyd Carter. And Lloyd Carter uh, made some uh, comments that, that in his own mind were the truth. Well, you know, it takes from between 250,000 and a half a million farm laborers, as we all know, most of them enter the country illegally, to bring in the harvest, to work in the packing sheds. They bring a lot of social problems with them, the next generation. In any given day in Fresno, there's 3,500 people in jail. 1,500 of those people are gang members. And a lot of those people are second generation farm workers. What parent raises their child to become a farm worker? These kids, they, they're the least educated people in America or in the southwest corner of this valley. They turn to lives of crime, they go on welfare, they get into drug trafficking, and they join gangs. Lloyd Carter with the California Water Impact Network was responding to our questions about the thousands of families that will be left jobless and destroyed if water from the Delta isn't allowed to be pumped to the west side. The statement sent shockwaves through the valley. I just felt that he was totally, totally out of line. So your grandpa was a farm worker? Yes. Was he a gang member? No, he was not. He was not a gang member. Was he a <laughs> drug trafficker? He was not a drug trafficker, no. Um, was he on welfare? He never, never once. And if, and if and he thinks that, that, uh, that all people are going to become criminals because they come from the fields, well, he's wrong. I don't think I'm a criminal. I think I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a respectful guy. And, uh, and all the workers that you spoke to earlier, they're pretty good guys too. They're hardworking citizens who have contributed to the to the economy of the, the United States. Trabajamos como todo cualquier ciudadano de Estados Unidos. Si trabajamos es un beneficio para para el país. Muchos como están en las ciudades como ese Jorge Reyes no se dan cuenta cómo cómo tienen su la, la verdura o la fruta la tienen ahí en, en la tienda o en su casa para que la puedan comer ellos allá nosotros aquí somos somos los que trabajamos las tierras para que se, la, se dé la, la fruta y la verdura sí. y así ellos puedan conseguirla en la, en la tienda ¿Y hace cuánto que se vino usted dijo ya son 16 años que ya estoy aquí qué hacía allá Trabajaba como en el campo también con mi papá. Me ayudaba también a cultivar lo que es el maíz, el maíz, maíz y caña. Es lo que hice con mi papá, estaba, estaba más chico. Sí. Más que de México también está poco, el trabajo está poco escaso. Y es por eso que vine aquí a California. Hay un poquito más oportunidad de, de tener un poquito más de dinero y más chances que nos da aquí en California. Pues casi la mayoría, todos los que venimos, venimos porque allá en nuestra tierra está, está más, más, hay más crisis. Aquí es 8 dólares la hora al mínimo sí. y allá son 5 dólares el día, las 8 horas. Me imagina cómo se va a mantener con 5 dólares, pero los que nos venimos no tenemos dinero para, para arreglar un trámite de una visa o algo allá. Eh, venimos arriesgando la vida en todo el camino, cruzando la frontera y eso. Eh, yo me vine porque mi familia, todos estaban aquí. Nomás yo lo que estaba en México y por eso me vine para acá. Uh -huh. y, y pues aquí, aquí he estado y aquí voy a estar. Pues también a mí se vino uno de allá porque ya no hay trabajo y aquí había mucho. Y ya ahorita ya casi está igual aquí y allá porque ya no hay agua, no hay, no hay trabajo. My mother Obama hurt 
my wife and them on a taxi over here. My wife's from Mexico. She's from, from, they're from Durango. Thank God for letting them across it. That I never would have met my wife. I'm not married. I got 21 years with my wife. She's a teacher and she's keep, kept our family together and I love her a lot. And, you know, without her, I'm nobody. Llegué a la frontera de México con Guatemala y pues traía un poco de dinero, ahí lo roban, si trae dinero lo roban y si no trae pues ahí anda viendo cómo va a ser para, para seguir para adelante. En el caso de nosotros pues era seguir para acá, pues el transporte que nos iba a traer acá pues era el tren y montándonos, arriesgando pues ya que el tren se arranca y va corriendo uno se le sube. Da pánico que lo agarren o algo porque tantas cosas que han habido, a veces lo secuestran, a veces lo golpean, lo encierran, pues le hacen tantas cosas. Y pues esa es la razón de que uno trata de evadir. Y a veces toca correr, brincar cercos o tirarse al agua o pues tantas cosas por tratar de que no lo vayan a agarrar. Durmiendo pues a donde nos agarraba la noche. Pues a ver si el siguiente día íbamos a, a comer o a beber agua. No, nomás íbamos lo que conseguíamos el día, le decía noche, donde los agarraba la noche. A buscar ahí donde dormir un rato y luego a seguir. Está duro para allá, para traerse una familia de allá. Pues no sé. Sí. Han estado conmigo desde el primer día pues que nacieron y nunca los he abandonado. Siempre he estado conmigo. ¿Cuánto tiempo le tomó? El viaje, este, como unos mes con 18 días, con la ilusión de que aquí pues ah, salga uno un poco más adelante. Seasonally, they keep coming back uh, because they know us. So every year they come and look for us. They really look to us um, as part of their future. Um, we are their security. La experiencia que tenemos los hombres, eh, esa experiencia se, se, se eh, Necesitan muchos años de experiencia para, que, para, para, para hacer el trabajo que hacen. You know, sometimes we didn't have work for them, um, and we'd keep them on the payroll. We would, you know, send them out to pick up trash on the roadsides. Uh, in fact, a couple of times, about three times, we had there were food distributions in Fireball, and they were looking for volunteers. I sent two or three guys over there to help move the heavy stuff around, and that was all on my payroll. What could I do? I have to keep these guys working, um, and um, economically, it, it was draining me. But morally, I had to look out for these guys. Right now, USDA says that we have to ask for proof that you're a drought victim. We would like to not be that strict, but this, but right now, USDA, the, the federal says. We have to ask for this information. They have to either show an unemployment slip, a letter from their employer stating that you know they were let go from the drought. Um, they have to prove who they are and that they live in whatever city that we're at. If you're undocumented, your employer is not going to give you a piece of paper that says, hey, I hired you in the first place. They're just here to find work. They're just another person like me. Somos cuatro la familia, más bien y a veces pues no, no alcanza para pagar renta y biles y, y la comida y comprar ropa también es otra de las cosas que tiene que comprar zapatos uh -huh. y a veces pues tiene que limitar uno más porque gana uno menos que no van a comprar lo que otros ellos les compran uno como juegos y, y lo que ellos quieren no se les va a poder comprar porque pues no, no hay dinero para, para comprar, no alcanza My friends want to go out and they want to, you know, have fun and you know, come eat at Subway or go eat at places, but yet they have no money because they say their parents haven't worked in so long. And I think that's kind of, it's kind of awful for that, for parents, you know, to know if they're gonna have food on the table 
tomorrow for their children. Well, Dota is a small community. It's a farming town, mm -hmm. and, and it's based on that. People, that's what they live on. You know, that's, that's their whole meaning of life. Their own their income and their kids. How they feed their kids, how they pay their bills. And when, it, when something drastic like that, where the water situation runs, there's no crops, there's no work. I mean, it's, people don't eat. People go without. People lose their homes. I see families homeless. They shouldn't be homeless. The economy has ruined my life, ruined a lot of life. My nephew is moving out of state because there's no work here. He's been without work for four years and he has credentials to run a shed and everything. There's no work, no work, no water. I've been out of work for two years. How many years? Two years. Two years? Two years. I've been out of work for two years. And I've been, I've worked all my life. I've been trying to track farm. And now the churches, uh, they're helping me. So we're pretty getting by. It's rough. What, what church is that? The, the, um, Pentecostal church right here in Mendota. The ones that help right here and packing up the food. As a person who lives here in this area, they're bringing in food. That's that's degrading because here is where they used to be number one. Valley, San Joaquin Valley used to support everybody. And now we're getting food from Chile, from all these countries that we help them produce what they have. We showed them how to do it. You know, the government has showed them. People have gone to show them. For what? <clears throat> you know, for them to, you know, take it a, it's degrading. Okay. And I, that's from an American. I'm not an immigrant. I'm not nothing. I live here. I was born here. I was better for born here in Mendota. But this is degrading. So you've seen this whole situation? Oh, from the beginning. I lived here all my life. All my life. And, and it's become worse in the last... Oh, in the last four years it's gotten worse. And maybe it's before, but before it wasn't so bad. You couldn't notice it. But, yeah, it's it's gotten worse. Very much so. Uh, I've, I've lived here 40, 43 years, and uh, thanks to the grace of God, my wife has went to college and everything, and she's a teacher here, and um, she's keep us, kept it together, and we're, we're out of it. This town, by the grace of God, next year. If there's nothing here for my kids. My kids, I got an 18-year-old daughter, and a 15, a 15 going to 16, and a one going to 15, and there's nothing in this town for them. There hasn't been none for me, and there ain't nothing for my kids, and it's time to leave. You know, they say it's gonna be a ghost town, everybody is a ghost town. For me it is, there's nothing here for me. And there's nothing here for a lot of my friends, and I can say that there's a lot of my friends that don't have work. If I'm, I'm me, there's a lot of people like me. You know, it's hard, and it's sad. Yeah, I know that work seasonal work, and they work for a season, and they go back, and a lot of them said they're not coming back. There's not a lot of, there's not an incentive to come if there's not going to be no water, no work. We, the farmers, the dairymen, the workers, the small business, <clears throat> that are directly or indirectly related to the industries, we are the most important part of our economy. We feed the nation, we feed the world. If we don't, if we don't have a strong agriculture in this country, we have a weak country. Pero, pero en qué cabeza cabe de cortarle el agua a las personas que ya están sufriendo eh, un, un tiempo económico el más mal tiempo desde los 40 desde que estaba Rosa en la oficina ¿no? hasta el juez que hizo este, este, uh, esta ley que pasó con Roma, ¿no? él dijo que sus manos estaban atadas que él no podía haber hecho otra decisión porque así había escrito la ley de cuando ellos cortan Yes. Te dan 0% de alocación. Entonces, eso es guerra. Este pleito es de todos. The Endangered Species Act, when it was passed back in the 70s, we were asleep at the switch. California agriculture had no idea what it could lead to. To hurt our economy, which it has. 
we thought that'd be a balance, but it didn't turn out that way. It's great that if it, if it, if it had solved all the problems for the state of California, and, but it didn't. 17 years later, here we are again now, except this time we already had our 50% taken away. That's why it's time we take on the streets, it's time we march, it's time to do something. It's really an unbelievable situation where we don't have the water, where we're promised the water, and we don't have it because the fish, the smelt, is, has to be protected. And they've always said that the smelt was protected by screens. Wrong. I did my own research on it. You can put your hand through the screens, and a little tiny smelt like that can certainly go through the screens. There's the biology, what I'm saying is that the biology of the smelt is all messed up. There's no way that, the, that, that they can say that the smelt is being eat, churned up in the Tracy pumps when they gather them up and put them in tanker trucks and take them over to the Antioch Bridge and dump them out. It, in the same tank, there's predators. There's the largemouth uh, bass and salmon and all kinds of fish that are feeding on the smelt. That's why the smelt numbers are going down. They're not being, they're not going through and getting churned up by the pump. They didn't even make it that far. They're in a waiting, they're in a pool waiting for it. So again, the biology, we need really good, intelligent biology on what's going on with the smelt. And then we can, maybe we can find better ways to protect them. There's got to be exceptions. If that law has no loopholes, then it's an unjust law. And then Dr. King and Chavez and all those leaders before us taught us that unjust laws will not stand. They must be broken and challenged. And, and all they will be. And, and, do, and to respect to the, to the environmentalists, I think they've done a great job in marketing their their uh, their agenda for for wildlife and fish and wildlife, and they've done a great job. They have the power to do it. You know, a lot of them are in the, work inside the government, and they have the power to 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 not only support themselves but to fight for their cause. And farmers like ourselves, well, we were too busy trying to farm and make a living under 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 normal uh, pressure from survival. And uh, and uh, so and we're not many of us. There's not many of us. Farm workers are the same way too. Most most of us farm workers are farmers. We just we just want to eat and get our check and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and go home. We don't get involved with all these, these, these uh, uh, issues uh, and, and the politics of, of, of the government. And uh, it's come back to haunt us because since uh, the environmental has been very strong since the late 1960s when we were in college, mm -hmm. uh, it became very strong. And so all the, the government has put a lot of attention on environmental purposes. And they, they, the legislators who got elected by the cities they, they basically wrote the laws for themselves. That's, that's where the frustration sits in on us, on all the farmers. You, all you can complain and hopefully there's some people who listen to us. Yeah, you know, 80,000 people are pretty much laid off at, from jobs in, in Central Valley because of lack of water. You know, and somebody like at and lays off 2,000 people, uh, they make the, the headline news. This is not making the news like we need it. I want to see the national media out here. They're not out here. Fox News is here. Really? That's yes. good to know. So you cover all avenues? Yeah, I've been doing it for 26 years. I cover the entire industry. With, with, I'm a magazine feature writer as well as um, anchor of the news on a website. Wow. That's quite a hike back in here. The government does not work for fish. The government works for us. I like that.
great gathering we have here today. I mean, of so many farmers and farm workers, mayors and students, business owners, civil, civil leaders, politicians, everyone is coming together here today. It's fantastic, and I'm so impressed by the kind of work that you've been doing and marching for the last few days, marching through the wonderful California Central Valley, which is, of course, the most productive farmland in the world. We are here today, and together we say, we need water. We need water. We need water. We need water. And uh, what do you think of what Schwarzenegger said today? I think he's not going to do nothing about it. You don't believe I don't, it? I don't, don't believe, believe but maybe, maybe he will. So you don't believe in Schwarzenegger? No. But the day, is, uh, the day is about much more than just water, or about politics, or about policies. It is about jobs, it is about our schools, it is about our families, it is about our livelihoods, our environment, it is about the entire economy of the Central Valley, it's about the entire economy of the state of California. This is why we need water! We need water! Okay, why, why do you think he's going to do anything? Just... Because if they, they didn't get to this point, you know, they shouldn't have, they should have helped continue the water. Why did they stop the pump? They, they could open them right now if they wanted to. As a matter of fact, we just found out today that our unemployment rate now is 11.2%, and this is absolutely unacceptable. So let's go and tell the world that we need water. We need water. We need water. You know, they're doing what they can. There's only so much they can do. <laughs> you know, they'll flat tell you that uh, we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can for you. We're gonna do this. We're gonna try to do that. But the the truth of the matter is, and what they're trying to tell you without belittling themselves is, they're powerless. <laughs> they're just flat powerless. Cesar Chavez knew the power of a good march. We never will stop until we find a way, find a way together here, because this is the right thing to do. So let's tell the lawmakers once again. I think that Schwarzenegger is just one of them. I think the, re the only reason he came down to the march <clears throat> was to put a cap on it and silence the movement. He has done nothing. What has he done? We still don't have the water. Everybody's marching. Everybody's mm. trying to become a big in number so that we can make a statement over there. Mm. Our statement ain't for Sacramento. Sacramento's shot. There, you've yeah. seen all our representatives. They know what we want. Tell them again? No. This is for CNN to take it to, to, take it to, to the, Washington. They're the ones that have the power to shut the environmentals down. They have not done nothing. But I know the Democratic Party could, could turn the pumps on tomorrow if they want to. They don't do it for political reasons, because they're in the pockets of the environmental groups. They have more power than Sacramento. They have, they, they have enough power over the judge that was the one that shut the pumps down. They're huge, and they've got a lot of money, and they got ways of moving their money around in elections, election years, and stuff like that. You don't go with the environmentalists, you ain't getting nowhere in the elections. In January of 2008, I testified before the Water and Power Subcommittee and asked that the Democrats that control Congress overturn a court-imposed man-made drought in California. Despite my pleas, this Congress and our President have done nothing. It's time to stop valuing fish over families. It's not as easy as, as my colleague from California has suggested. What is your solution for the salmon? people, thousands and thousands of families that have lost their livelihoods fishing for salmon because of overpumping from the Delta. We've already unemployed thousands of fishermen, thousands of shoreside businesses. We've spent hundreds of millions of dollars in disaster relief because this system does not have enough water in it. Recreational fishing in the state is a multi-billion dollar interest. Now do we really want to let the Delta die so a few hundred farmers on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley can stay in production? $126 million, excuse me, was put in for the cities in Southern California so they can start the process of recycling, reusing water, and taking the pressure off the Central Valley farmers, taking the pressure off, off of the Delta areas. That's the kind of coordinated activity that has finally begun 
under the Obama administration. But not one dollar came to mitigate the effects of the southern San Joaquin Valley. They expressed outrage for the last administration's alleged failure to deal with the consequences of Hurricane Katrina. We saw what happened when Karl Rove decided he knew more about the science than the people on the Klamath River and the Fish and Wildlife Agencies. We had the largest salmon kill in the history of the, of, of the West Coast, and you ended up, and you ended up spending hundreds of millions of dollars to help out farmers, to help out fishermen, to help out small businesses all over Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. There's too many people that sit in this building here and yak all day long and nothing gets settled. We need the water. Quit playing around with people's lives. Todos han venido aquí, el gobernador, y nos han dado buenas palabras y, y buenas ansias, pero no nos han dado agua. Como ustedes pueden oír, las personas no queremos limosna, no queremos a, a, a comida gratis, simplemente queremos regresar a nuestros fin, regresar a trabajar. What, what is the government doing? Nothing. Just sitting on the fence giving us lip service. They don't care for us. I never knew what discrimination was. I know when I was a kid because I was fortunate enough never to be discriminated in school nor, nor anything I've ever done. But honestly now, because of the Endangered Species Act, I feel that farmers and farm workers were the ones <laughs> we're being discriminated now. We haven't been treated equally like we're supposed to in this country. Uh, there's, there's an injustice going on right now. Maybe God is testing us. Maybe we're going through hard, difficult times just so we can see the value of each other. And I was deeply hurt to hear that, that, that us migrant farm workers are supposed to be hoodlums and we're on welfare. You gotta know that's not true. You understand uh, what we're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. I understand the situation. Yeah, my parents were yeah. farm workers. Yeah. You know, I understand how things are and, and, and it's, you know, the survival and trying to make yeah. it every day. Let's put this, let me ask you a question, Juan. Your parents came from uh, Mexico to the United States. Well, what, how old were they? Uh, my dad was 10 years old. And your mother was from Mexico too? We came actually five years uh, later. Yeah, my dad came first. All right. Um, and then he was. And just, your father worked on the fields, driving tractor, exactly. irrigating. Uh, have they been able to buy a house here? Do they have a home here? Yeah. Okay. But home. Well, so now that's, a, that's an American dream. Yes, he's got him. To buy a home, it's an American dream. Mm -hmm. Because when I was a kid, my father said, hey, he says, we're not ever going to own a home, but man, if we just own a car. That man, you own a car, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. Now, if you can buy a house, that's even better, man. Mm -hmm. now, 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 the next step would be, my father said, look, I might not have had the same opportunities as, as uh, you know, I had some opportunity, but not like, you guys have more opportunity. Every generation has to better itself. Mm -hmm. So so your father made a sacrifice for you to come here from, from mm -hmm. Mexico, okay? Okay, they're here and they ha they work in, in whatever they, they, they're limited to because mm -hmm. maybe lack of education or maybe the language. Mm -hmm. But you're not limited to what you do. See? No. Well, my Why? dad put me my dad put me in the field, so I... So you know that. So you, I yeah. knew how it yeah. was to But work. it was the work ethic he wanted you to yeah. have. Not only work in the fields, but he wanted that work ethic mm -hmm. for you to know how just to work. Now, if your father had been in construction, he would have probably put you in construction to get you that work ethic. Because the work ethic has got to be taught to young kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if you, I don't care if you work a week in the fields or a month. That teaches you work ethic. And if you if you're taught how to work, you'll survive in anything, whether whether it's farming or whether it's construction or whether it's working any any job in the cities. You know, you'll survive because you know how to survive. You've been taught to survive, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, now, that's... now look at the opportunity your kids will have now. If you do your job and you're a good man and you're a profession, what you do, and, and, and you get reputation, they're going to have as much or more opportunity than, 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 yeah. than yourself. Definitely. Because you, you, you're leading the way for them. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what we want, you know. I am proud to be from this area. Yeah. When my family first came to this country, this area gave us everything. Gave us a home, an opportunity. We've taken advantage of that. My father's not with us anymore, but he wanted us to be an asset to the community. I hope I've done that today, Daddy. I hope you're proud. My father lived there. He's buried in Bainuba. He was a brave, wonderful father, and I miss him. And 
I think I would do him a disservice. He always taught his children to stand up for what was right. I've been half the man my dad's been, but maybe it's just enough. And we're marching for them. Every person who has a child or loves their children knows you want to leave it better than you than you found it. This event was the brainchild of our coalition leader, Paul Rodriguez. For someone like Paul to be dedicated to an issue like this is just, for me, it's, it's mind-boggling. Uh, here I am, a farmer struggling out here on the west side to, to survive this thing, and here this guy comes from Los Angeles. He got you know, he's a celebrity and he comes out here to help us. I, I feel humbled that he would do that. I don't think that Hollywood is really informed. I gotta believe that all my friends over there just think that being against the environment is this. They have pictures of us going stabbing Bambi in the head. Tienen miedo? No creo que la sociedad se conmigo porque dicen que mis sociedades son radicales. ¿Qué clase de radical soy yo? Lo único que quiero es agua. No estoy pidiendo que nos den limosa, nada. Y es más, si yo nunca tengo otra, otra, otro show, otra cinta, si mi carrera se acaba por tener este punto de vista, pues, pues que se haga la voluntad de Dios, ¿no? Ya tengo viejo, ya tengo 54 años, ya, ya he hecho lo que voy a hacer. El futuro le queda a los jóvenes, ¿no? me voy alegre. Paul is very dedicated and he's, he, he, is, uh, he has taken on this task of helping us through this thing and I greatly admire him and I greatly appreciate what he's done for us. He is with the, the California Latino Water Coalition. He has organized this march and he has made a tremendous event for the world to see. We're trying to get our water back from the uh, trying to get our allocation back so we can survive. If you look at the, the, the future of the, of the economy of the state of California, they're looking at having future income and, and revenue being created for taxes to, back to the state. Uh, this is how you start. You, you have to get the uh, uh, farms uh, operating again so that they can uh, distribute their, their, their uh, income and, and expenses into the economy of the state of California. Why restrict the farmers from growing, uh, 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 growing their crops? And, and, and the farmers themselves with water supplies will stimulate the economy. That's exactly right. This grass should be producing food. It should be providing jobs. It should be bringing income, not just to us, to the whole to the area. You know, because all the money that comes to us, it goes out, it gets spread out among everybody. The workers get their wages, they take them to their families, you know, we buy tires from the local stores, you know, we buy farm equipment from the local dealer, they have people working there that their jobs depend on it, um, you know, and just uh, a lot of things, you know, that that is the base of our economy here, and that takes away from that economy, and it hurts the whole, the whole community. The, the state of California, if it's broke already and they want to fix problems, so here's a good opportunity to start fixing something by starting where, starting with our natural resource, which is the number one, the number one commodity that we need is, is water. The water system here has been, were built 40, 50 years ago, the Central Valley Project, the State Water Project, they were built in the 50s and 60s, and uh, that was when the state of California had, I don't know, 10, 12 million people. And we're up over 30 million people now, and probably Heading still growing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we we really think that the state needs to get prepared, not for just now for the crisis that is upon us, but for the next 40 or 50 years, because the state's going to continue to grow, and we may have uh, global warming, as they say. And if we do, and if we have, you know lower rainfall and precipitation, we need to be able to capture and utilize and, and transport this water in a better sense that the state can survive. Otherwise, we're going to have these crises all the time. Every time we have a couple of dry years, we're going to be back in the same boat. I kind of like to think of this as your house. If you have the plumbing broken or plugged in your house, and you can't get water, you can't take a shower, you can't 
go to the restroom. restroom. It doesn't matter what your economic situation is, you're going to get it fixed. It doesn't matter what you have to do, you're going to get it fixed some way or another. You're not going to wait for better times. And that's that in, 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 a, in a kind of a, uh, a humorous way is, is our situation in this state right now. But we're not out of the woods yet. Right now, we still have the environmental restrictions on our water imposed by the federal government and we cannot survive another year unless they do something about that. Our, next, our federal government needs to get involved in helping us with these, with these pump restrictions. They need to get involved. We're here today in Mendota, California with what is unfortunately the last of the state-funded drought disaster relief efforts that we're able to provide to the community who, through no fault of their own, are unemployed, don't have any meaningful chance for employment because of the drought, and struggle to provide for their families, including their basic needs of having healthy food to eat. And after today, we won't be able to come back. We don't have the resources at Community Food Bank that it requires to serve the roughly 200,000 people we've had the great privilege of feeding through this effort since July. So we've really, really come full circle. A year has come around. We've only gotten the, the, the gift that we got from the Department of Interior, Ken Salazar, 25% here in mid-March. Not enough. Too little, too late. 25% is a band-aid. We're going to be worse off next year than we are this year because there's going to be no long-term solutions. That's right. Hey, bring your knife. They'd rather take care of a fish and take care of human right. beings. Right. People need to work. They don't need to take care of a fish. They need to take care of human beings that are working, that are living here in this town, that don't even have where to go, where to eat. If it wasn't for the government, the people getting this food, they wouldn't have nowhere to eat. That's what they need. Brandon, one of his first fundraisers to get his name out, did a uh, smelt barbecue where they fried up some smelt and cooked it as part of a meal. You only get about two or three bites out of it, but uh, it's a good appetizer. I, I prefer it fried because you get a couple bites out of the belly area, but otherwise it is pretty good. Good, you, good you eating. Tasted it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's funny because it's endangered species in Stockton in Sacramento, but you go to any uh, fish market here in town, you can buy it by the pound. So it's very funny that that smelt is endangered, but our smelt is fine, and we farm the crap out of this area. So. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but what's now more interesting is another EPA group is saying because this area is now so uh, drought and there's not enough water for this area, now the California kit fox, the some kind of salamander and gecko, those are now becoming endangered because there's not enough water. But the delta smelt, of course, needs the water more than these other two species. So I want to see PETA like fight it out in a cage match to figure out which animal is more important than humans. Three species. Yeah. Humans. <laughs> and humans. Oh, yeah, and humans. Uh, here in Mendoza, the, la the last day. What's going to happen for you with the situation? Whatever I got, I save. I held on to it. So like that, hopefully in the future there's, there's work. We could find jobs. We could do something. But we don't know what's going to happen. What we're doing is trying to distribute food to help people make it through these difficult times. And uh, farm workers are strong people. They're going to get by. We will use every resource we have to continue serving these folks because I just can't sleep at night knowing that my neighbors are going hungry. And that's the important thing. It doesn't matter why there's a drought, we just know that our neighbors can't work. And that's all they want are their jobs back so that they can take care of themselves and their families. Este asunto, this situation, is not only about the farm worker, but everybody that's around us. There are many today that are crying. Hay muchos hoy que están llorando. There are many today who have that same fear within their lives. Hay muchos que tienen ese mismo temor en sus miradas, en sus caras. And that's why we're here. Por eso es que estamos aquí. We all want to survive. And, 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 and for those who put, put food on the table and uh, make it easy for everyone when they, when they got plenty of food in their refrigerators and stores, Hey, they're gonna remember where it come from. It don't come from from the. It doesn't, it doesn't grow overnight. It takes it takes months to grow these crops, and it takes a lot of workers and a lot of skilled workers to to uh, to get them into the field, get them into the refrigeration, get them into the cities. And uh, this is what we would like. Uh, we, we, we would ask for more respect on that. Yeah. All the politicians have to realize it's gonna scare the hell out of them. 
Yeah. And Scott will scare the hell out of them to know that Mr. Johnson and Mr. Romero and Rodriguez are friends now. Let them know that. We're going to sink or swim, um, but we're going to do everything we can to survive. It's going to be tough going, but you know I'm going to do everything in my power to survive so that so that their jobs uh, also survive. ¿Usted se mira todavía aquí en Mendoza en varios años? Pues, sí, sí, este, es lo que nos gustaría pues seguir aquí y, y vernos en una situación más diferente, con más nuevas oportunidades. And one of the things we can do is make it possible for them to work in these parks in building our country. Progress represents the combined will of the American people. And only when they are joined together for action, instead of standing still and thinking that everything that has to be done has been done, it's only when they join together in a forward movement that this country moves ahead. First of all, I want to thank Joe and Maria uh, Del Bosque for showing Governor Brown and me uh, around their farm. Joe and Maria work to improve the health and safety of farm workers. Uh, their livelihoods depend on the functioning of these farms. Uh, right now, almost 99% of California is drier than normal. And that's why last month, Governor Brown declared a state of emergency, directing state officials to prepare for drought conditions. California is our biggest economy. California is our biggest agricultural producer. Current Governor Brown's dad built in some of the aquifers that have been so important to the economy of the state for decades. If we were able to do that then, we should be able to do it now. So what happens here matters to every working American. El 
alma tan solo pensar que no puedo parar y yo solo sé Oh, oh, oh.